Hello, today I would like to talk about how I create complex objects in OpenSCAD. OpenSCAD is the programmer's solid modeler, and I'm a programmer, so I want to do it like I'd, I'd do it if I were programming. Um, I like to use object-oriented programming, and that's a kind of a funny name when you're thinking about programming actual objects like you do with OpenSCAD, uh, especially since OpenSCAD really doesn't support object-oriented style programming. However, you can fake it good enough and make your code nice and clean. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. So you can see I have a section at the top defined for globals. Now these are variables that I want um, outside uh, OpenSCAD programs or scripts or whatever you want to call them uh, to have access to. So if I include this file from another file, I want that other file to have access to these values. Uh, they're actually global. They're not, you know, any sort of actual property, but I, I treat them kind of like you'd treat properties in uh, like a business object type of thing. So uh, the important part, because they are global, is to name them something that uh, isn't going to conflict with anything else you might be including. So my part is called complex object and I'm going to name it CO underbar for complex object. Um, I want this thing to be kind of a roundish thing. That's one of its defining things. So I'm going to say CO radius and define the radius since I will want to know that later, uh, 25. And I'm going to find CO height as 30. I think we'll make a good one. Now, uh, the actual object itself. I've found that probably the best way of doing an object, or at least an object that you plan on using a part for something, is to do it thusly. You want a difference, oops, excuse me there, typo. Uh, you want a difference of two unions. So let me throw in both of these unions. So, I have two unions. Basically, everything that's in the top union right here uh, is going to have subtracted from it everything that's in the bottom union. So, every time I want to add a piece onto whatever I'm creating, I put it up here. And every time I want to subtract something away, I put it down here. Um, you notice I don't have any default templated intersections. Intersections are useful, but they're generally useful inside one of these two blocks. Uh, at least that's what I found. So everyone has their own way of doing it. I find this to be a pretty good template for just about any sort of object you want to create. So let's start off with our basic object. I'm going to say cylinder. Um, I want a radius of, you guessed it, CO radius. Uh, and height of CO height. So first things first, it's not enough just to define your variables. You actually have to use them. Otherwise, it's really of no use to anyone. So you can see I have my basic uh, basic shape there. Hmm, I'm thinking I want this maybe bigger. I kind of want something flatter. There we are. We'll use that. Um, next thing I probably want on here is I want to do a loop of some kind. So I'm going to say um, R equals, let's say, 0 to uh, 0 to 5, we'll say. Oops. Uh, now, you might be wondering what exactly I'm doing, and I will show you. I am going to do a rotate uh, I'm going to do it R times 360 divided by, sorry, my, my wife's uh, kind of leaving there, uh, and the dog's going a bit crazy. She did not heed my warning that I am recording, so yeah, that's nuts to me, huh? Um, so what I'm actually doing here is I'm setting up a uh, a rotational translate, which is a big fancy word for doing. Let's see, uh, translate it out that way for doing. Uh, uh, really kind of hard to explain. Let's just put a cube out there first and a cube of 10. And I'll show you what that does. 
basically it, it it rotates things out in a certain way. And I should also make it center equals true. Sorry, I'm kind of moving it. So what that does, it takes from the center, rotates it, and then translates it out in a direction. So, and you can also see that if I were to change my radius here, things still kind of match up the way I'd expect them to. So this is how I'm doing that. Uh, but I kind of want this object to be different. Sorry, I'm making my view smaller here. I don't want it to be a perfect cube. I want it to be, let's see, 10 by 10 by CO height. So there we are. Made a nice little structure there. Um, and for some reason, I want to have uh, I want to have some pieces taken out of here. Oops, did not mean to get rid of that. It's meant to copy that. So instead of this, I want, hmm, I need four screws in here. Let's say this part needs four screws going through it. So what I'm actually going to do, is I'm going to make this into a cylinder with R equals 6, H equals, uh, I better make it CO height times 1.1, just to make sure it's a little bit longer than, than that is. And I also want to only translate out by half. So you'll see I have four nice little holes, kind of looks like a button in here. So four holes, five little spokes on the end. Uh, we have ourselves a complex object. I have no idea what this would be useful for, but you can kind of see the basic way in which I create this. Now, the nice thing about this is that, say I need to include this into a file, and I want to find a couple things, like how tall is this thing? Say I need to center it against something uh, in, in the Z direction. Well, I have my variable that says how tall it is. From any other file that I include this from, I can just call CO height and that's exactly what it is, and therefore if I change this, it changes it in the other file. So clever use of these variables will always add to kind of better programming and more usable objects. Um, hope you learned something, and I hope you find something really fun to use this, uh, this new knowledge with. So make cool things, and I'll talk to you next time.